Hello everyone, this is my channel, Mega Publix. It used to be more of a gaming channel, but I'm focusing, I'm going to focus a little bit more on roleplay at the moment. Today, I'm Lorelian. You can just call me Nick for this because we're all friends. And today I am bringing you The Good Society. This is a roleplay game that is heavily based off the works of Jane Austen. This is all about drama today. All about juicy, delicious drama in the Regency era. So now we're going to start by introducing our characters. I am playing Theodore Hawthorne. He is the potential heir to his aunt's duchy. Uh, she, she's off in, or she, she's from um, some fake place in the Holy Roman Empire, some fake duchy in the Holy Roman Empire that I've yet to name. And she has made me her heir. I am also currently engaged to Miss Rose Pickering. I'm a fancy, fancy dandy, but young, young in age. I'm but 16. We then have Remark or Kramer. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Ah, Lieutenant Commander William Hawthorne at your service. I've been away on the far side of the world for quite a number of years now, and I had the pleasure of being uh, at my son's betrothal that I have not seen in quite a number of years. Cassie? I'm Ambrose Pickering. I am originally from Scotland, where I lived with my brother. Um, we were residing there, and he became a baron from a far-off land. Um, after our small town, Scotland, uh, was led by the Super U.S. and was overtaken, we decided to move to London. And, um, it's London, we made connections and engaged in the social circle, and that is how I became a pro. Um, All right. And you were breaking up a little bit, so you might want to leave chat and come back to it real quick. Oh. Yeah, I had a hard time hearing that. But to summarize, she is from a Scottish village, um, and she has been betrothed to good old Theo here. And then lastly, we have Miss Jade Nightingale, or Sierra. <laughs> I am known as Jade Nightingale. Um, my mother is Joy Nightingale, formerly Joy Hawthorne, um, sister of William Hawthorne and Grant Hawthorne. Um, Joy traveled to America when she married a rich American um, who had made his fortune in the railroad industry. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years back and my mother and I decided it would be best to travel back to where our roots are, reconnect with our family and start a new life here in London. And that brings us to today. Today, we are Oops, let me bring this, uh, let me actually toss a picture in there. Today, we are at the ball, a uh, Regency ball. Uh, we are at a ball celebrating the betrothal of Rose Pickering and Theodore Hawthorne. Uh, while I get a picture here in the background, um, we're going to essentially start off with this is this is being thrown by my aunt, uh, Duchess Cassandra Ernest. Um, and while we are getting started, we are going to have Duchess er oops, Duchess Cassandra Ernest, whose name is incorrect on the character because I've 
altered it since then. There we go. And her brother, uh, Lieutenant Colonel William Hawthorne. Uh, for the sake of the scene, while I am preparing a uh, background for this ballroom, I'm going to have, we're going to have uh, the Duchess being played by Sierra. You guys are together right before the ball is about to start. I'm just going to check my audio. Is it better? Yes. Okay. Yes, much better. Okay. Um, also, sorry, just pausing for a moment. Um, so Cassandra, Rich Ants is siblings with, we've got Grant, we've got Kramer, William Hawthorne, and my mother, Joy. Is that, am I following that correctly? That is correct. Okay. All right, Cassandra, you really outdone yourself this time. The food is arranged. The guests are coming. Servants are already ahead of schedule. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, and I'm playing Cassandra. I guess Ryan's not here for right now, right? Correct, yes. Okay, okay. Thanks, sorry. First time here, guys. Okay. Would you mind repeating that for me, please? Sorry. So you are kind of walking through this main ballroom. Everything is set. Servants are moving around, hustling and bustling. Ah, Cassandra, you've really outdone yourself. The servants are moving as fast as any shipment I've commanded. Why, thank you, as they should be. I've certainly paid them well enough. Ah, for the honor of hosting a Hawthorne gala, gala like this, I would think that the privilege would be enough for them this day. But do tell, how have things been in my absence? I've scant been back in London for a few month, weeks now, and the Admiralty is only now starting to let me off their leash. Well, it is a pleasure to have you back, especially for such a monumental event. Um, it, it's been wonderful to see this this romance blossom between our uh, our two two lovers here today. Um, and of course, we have par spared no expense in in making this a memorable moment, deserving of the Hawthorne name. Of the Hawthorne name, yes. And how is dear Theodore? I know that you raised him almost by your single-handedly in my absence, especially when uh, my dear wife passed away when he was born. I must admit, I scantly know him. Uh, as far as what I'm hearing is that he is... Uh, Lively youth, to say the least. Well, he's certainly been a handful, but uh, in recent years, he seems to have gotten his head on his shoulders and found some direction. I think I think much of this may have to do with Rose's presence. Ah, uh, at least he can have some modicum of discipline, even if it is from a. Oh, goodness, a Scottish lass. That 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 may certainly have helped, I I'm sure. Yes. But I see noticing Joy uh, entering the ballroom that I am not the only uh relatively new arrival uh, back in London. Are you just been a resolve to bring Joy into the uh, ballroom? Does uh, is that do I have to add? Is the process asking and then going into a so resolve? Because you are no? compelling someone. Yes, the process would be asking. Oh, oh no, that's all right then. Okay. Oh, but but she is here. Oh yeah. 
I must ask, uh, Cassandra, how has London been in my dear absence? Between my dear, uh, dear, our, between our dear older uh, brother and our, uh, between our late father's passing, how has my, how have our siblings fared? Well, it's certainly glad. It's certainly a good thing to uh, see the whole family whole again, as we have our dearest Joy and Jade returning to the fold. I was never so sure about her decision to leave in the first place, but we welcome her back with open arms. I, I mean, her marriage to a Yank combined with uh, our dear, my dear son's marriage to a Scot. Well, at least we will be representative of how far the empire has come in this set and what will be represented here. Uh, to, uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure what I'll say to Theodore when I see him. Goodness, so many weeks back in London, every time I dear bring up the thought, uh, clutching a, a locket in it, uh, across his chest, I don't know if I can look him in the eyes. Well, I'm sure a, a brief congratulations would be a good place to start tonight. After all, it is not a celebration of love and reconnection. Love? Well, 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 I hope his marriage has such fortune to it. But I do have to remember, but it reminds myself of how that the greater the love of a relationship, the greater the pain when it goes as awry. Kind of tears off into the distance for a little bit. Uh, but all this talk, oh, Cassandra, I have to bid you uh, bid your leave for a second. Of course. Please enjoy the party. All right. So with that, the two part ways. Um, I think also before the party begins, I'd like to have a scene with Theodore and and Rose. Um, if possible. Uh, Theodore will be standing out the window, staring pensively, stroking his chin. Hmm. Rose and taps him on the shoulder. <laughs> ah, Miss, Miss, Miss Pickering. Uh, good, good to see you. Good, I, I'm glad. I, I'm from the deepest parts of my heart that you arrived here today. Well, I think it's our betrothal party. <laughs> I was kindly invited by you, was I not? <laughs> yes, yes, kindly invited by my aunt and, and by extension me. Yes, yes, we, yes. I'm glad to see you. Are you staying in London? I am, I am. Um, well, I'm sure you know that my brother and I made um, extensive plans to um, make sure that everything was in order down here in London. Um, but I, th I think that we will plan to stay around here while our, um, our engagement continues. For a second, I'm dumbfounded as to what to say. I'm going to spend a resolve oops, to have a one of the uh, one of the servants walking through, setting up some uh, walking through uh, with some drinks that they've recently prepared to trip over the carpet and spill on my uh, my nice beautiful coat. I look down at him oh. and I'm... I beg your pardon, sir. Regis, it's... It's okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything 
is going to be okay. I, I've got another jacket. Uh, this is... In fact, you know what? This is perfect. That is a much better jacket. I will... I'll see you later, Miss Pickering. Zai. Until we, until we see each other again, Theo. Zai bolt off into the corner. No, not into the corner. Into another room. The guests start to pile in. Uh, this would be a perfectly fine time for anyone to bring up their um, connections that they happen to play into the scene. Um, if anyone does. Otherwise... Ah, uh, Rose, says Caroline. How are you doing today? Hold on. Oh, I'm I, I muted. Um, I, <laughs> um, well, today could not be a happier day than to celebrate um, Theo and I being betrothed. I know that Cassandra put a lot of hard work into this, and I'm very grateful. And Caroline Hawthorne is the sister of Theodore Hawthorne, and the daughter of William Hawthorne. Oh, yes. I'm so happy for you uh, today to finally be able to take one more, uh, one step closer to embracing you as a sister soon enough. Are there tears in her eye? Uh, there's a gleam, but not tears. A gleam is good. <laughs> Well, it would only be to add it to our name officially, but I've always felt that connection with you, Carolyn. Oh, excellent. There, I, I swear you must accompany me. I have a new dog that I would love to see, uh, to uh, play with her in the park with you later on. I, as you know, I'm very fond of animals and I had to leave all of mine in Scotland when we left unexpectedly. And so I would certainly revel in um, spending time with you and your animals, as I know mm. that they will come to visit uh, Theo and I in the future. I didn't know you had to leave your poor love uh, puppy friends behind. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. A little gleamer eyes like, oh, I think I know exactly the wedding present now. <laughs> ah, but don't worry. There'll be a little bit of entertainment with a few of my dogs later on. Oh, I certainly look forward to it. Excellent. Until, until afterwards, I look, uh, I think uh, myself and a few other ladies have a good reception once the gala is uh, at an end, if you need a place to retire. Oh, you know me. I can um, party. All, I can stay at a party all night and I'll always find someone to talk to. But I appreciate that um, when I do need a solid group of friends that I will come and visit. Never fear to ask. You are basically a sister to us already. Now, excuse me. I'm sure that there's one of my uh, misplaced, uh, oh my goodness, a beautiful pug named Gretchen that is somewhere and I need to find her. Well, until we see each other again, I look forward to hanging out with you and, and, your, and Gretchen later. Ah, oh, excellent. But don't worry. I'm sure you'll be in good company soon enough. I think I see more people arriving. And with that, Caroline leaves in search of her dog as more and more people flood the uh, flood the uh, dance floor. More and more people get drinks from the servants. Theodore is nowhere to be seen at this moment. Do I need to spend a token for my character to come on scene, or can I just jump in? For the sake of right now, because it's not um, unreasonable for you to come in, you can just come in. 
if yeah. you're assuming that you are assuming that you are here at this party. I am. This is this is my family, my small branch of this family's uh, re-entry into society at such a, a perfect party as this. Okay, so I walk in. Um, why, hello, Miss Pickering. Uh, it's, it's so lovely to make your make your acquaintance. Uh, I am Jade Nightingale. Uh, you may have heard some stories about our side of the family. We've been absent for some time, but it's so lovely to get the chance to meet you today. And congratulations on your engagement, my dear. Pleasure to meet you, uh, Jade. As she, um, I don't know. Do we do we curtsy? I think we curtsy, right? Yep. Yep, that would make sense. Yeah, curtsy would make sense. Okay, we're gonna do that. As uh, as Rose politely curtsies, um, I am always looking forward to meeting more of Theo's family. And regardless of your time away, I'm sure that um, we will get to know each other much better soon. That sounds lovely. May May I ask how did how did you meet dear Theo? I don't know that I've ever heard the story. Oh, yes. So when I moved um, to London um, with with my brother, uh, Baron Jasper, um, oh, my battery's running low. Okay. I will, I'll take a break in a second. I'll finish this scene. Your character's um, going deaf, too. <laughs> um, so Duchess Cassandra actually um, heard of the plight of my family and decided to connect me and Theo um, in order to integrate me into London society and also, um, you know, Theo, she thought Theo and Jasper might be good friends as well. That sounds very generous of Duchess Cassandra. I, I am very pleased to hear that this has worked out well. And I'm look, looking forward to, to meeting Jasper and the rest of uh, the rest of the lovely people that you have brought into this circle. Well, it is also my pleasure, Jade. And thank you very much for making the trip. And I'm happy to hear you'll be staying in the area. Looking forward to spending more time getting to know you. And it was so such a pleasure to meet you. And I, I make a curtsy and wander off scene. I'm going to run upstairs and plug my computer in. What's it? We're gonna have Oops. Baron Jasper. See y'all, my family just arrived. <laughs> Somebody else has to play him though in the scene because I can't. I'm going to. So as the dance floor begins to lighten up, uh, we're actually going to have a scene between Baron Jasper Pickering and Rose Pickering. With me playing Baron Jasper. I believe they're... Are they brother and sister? Yes. Okay. And tell me a little bit about your brother. So we... He has had a lot of suitors, but they just have never worked out for him. Um, he is starting to think that they are only after him for his money. Um, since he inherited the... Uh, and since he became a Baron, the amount of interest in uh, these suitors has increased. And now that we're in London, it's kind of taken over his life. He walks over to you with a sullen face. Rose, good, good afternoon. Good evening, Jasper. Thank you very much for coming. Ah, uh, yes, it is the evening, isn't it? Uh, congratulations on finding finding love i i hope that one day i'm anywhere near as lucky as you happen to be i know that one day you will find it jasper but um we will i'm sure that we can um find you somebody uh duchess cassandra has been very good with matchmaking uh, your grace has been very great at matchmaking as i can clearly see you'll have to introduce me to her maybe Maybe she'll help me get through this rut. It's the worst. It's the worst, Rose. 
he says, I realizing know. that he's raising his voice a little bit too loud and attracting perhaps some unwanted attention. There are many women who would be um, very lucky to have you, Jasper. It's just just an um, issue of finding the right one. Are there? I feel, well, I feel as though there are many women who are happy to have me, but are there many women who are happen to, happy to have me for my masculinity, for my muscle, for my charm, or are they all just happy for my title and my money? I'm sorry, that is far too jaded. I, I should be happier on this auspicious day of yours. It's quite all right. I completely understand. I know that this has been a large part of what we've dealt with since London, but I can assure you there are many women out there who can see man for his qualities and not just his wealth. Well, if you find such a suitable, graceful woman, please send her my way. I most certainly will, but please enjoy the party, Jasper, and and see what connections we can make today. Yes, yes, let's do that. Theodore finally returns after the ball. Several dances have actually happened at, at this point. Theodore finally returns to the eyes of the general ballroom. Um, who do you think would get to, who do you think would talk to him first? Uh, his father or his fiance? Not his father. Not his father? Okay. Un unless Theodore is trying to seek him out, it, w it would not be the other way around. Understood. Back in a new, beautiful blue coat. He looks around. Rose enters. <laughs> ah, Rose. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Miss Pickering. I shoot. I, I guess we're engaged now, so it's, it is Rose. It's quite all right. I understand, but Theo, I quite, I quite have to insist that you call me Rose. All right, Miss Rose. I mean Rose. Uh, I guess we should perhaps have a dance? I think that would be quite proper. He proceeds to dance with you. His stares often looking over at Duchess Cassandra. And her stares looking around the room, observing who is all watching. Her is in Rose or Cassandra? Rose. Okay. As they glide along the floor, uh, Theo, Theodore, happens to be quite, uh, he seems a little bit more sullen than you would expect at his own engagement party. Theo, is everything quite all right? Ah, uh, everything is... Perfect. I just happened to hear that there was a, a possible chance of rain later, and I I don't like the rain, you see. Well, I'm sure there will be many types of weather while we are together, um, but we cannot let such weather spoil a splendid evening. Ah, yes, a fine relationship will weather any weather, I suppose. Um, even... Even the storm. Well, life will certainly bring us storms and sunshine and many things um, in our future. And maybe we can focus on creating more sun sunshine. The greatest storm of all, of course, is my father. You should know that he is a bit of a bully. Well, everyone has a past, and everyone um, has a future, and everyone's future is not dictated by their past. So, 
Yes, my father is the Storm, and I apologize that he is a bit of a brute. He's not here at... Or he is here, but he's not... I don't see him engaged in the dance floor, and... You'll have to ask him for a dance later. In fact, I insist. Well, if, it, if it is for... If it is your wish, then I will do my best. I will do my best to make your wish become become reality. As that is what I should shall do for the rest of our lives. I truly appreciate it. Um, where, how does how does your father look? I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting him. Like me, but his eyebrows are lower and angrier, and his face is scowled and aged. Like the, in fact, <laughs> he leans over slowly. Look for the most donkey-like person you can see. That, that is my father. Oh, Theo, you're so dramatic. Um, whatever happened between the two of you? He pauses for a second. To be honest, I, I don't know. He's been this way his whole my whole life i i assume perhaps he is merely insane was born a grump <laughs> well theo i cannot imagine anyone not being in a positive mood around you so hopefully i will um be able to speak to him and we can see how things go from there that would be wonderful and with yeah. that, the the music ends. Ah, I must I I must socialize with some some other people here, but I'm sure we'll get to know each other more as the life goes on. We most certainly will. Who else wants to have a scene? Should we have Rose? Does Rose want to reach out to? I've had like five, four scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need. What is Jade doing? Oh, what is what is the dad? Yeah. What is what is Hawthorne William Hawthorne doing? William Hawthorne is probably sitting on the sidelines between his brother uh, Grant. Cassandra's probably off busy uh, moving around, but I think I could see Joy. Hoff, uh, William and Grant in conversation I'm trying to catch up from old time potentially with a Beatrice uh, making an appearance or not uh, let's just start with um, where's Beatrice oh. uh, two of those are Cassie what the hell mm -hmm. two of those are Oops, no. Wait. Oh, that's all right. We'll just keep the... We can just do the three siblings. All right. Well, we could have... Uh... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, we'll bring I in... I was playing Cassandra in this, okay. and Ryan's not here. And if Cassie's playing Joy... Yes. And then I'll play... Um, I'll play uh, Grant. One second, let me adjust the character names on here. So go over the relationship with these individuals real quick. Uh, relationship. Uh, Cassandra's always been kind of the social butterfly. Uh, Joy, they were fond of each other, but... Uh, Oh, there was always a little bit of an age difference there. What is it? Trying to zoom in to Grant real quick. I think if you double click on his token, you'll actually. Ooh, that helps. That helps tremendously. Uh, 
Um, so I'm going to say that Grant and William actually have a good relationship behind, both behind closed doors and in front as far as as things go. That kind of cuts to a deeper part of William than is normally seen. Grant walks up to you with a smile. Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> Uh, I... Is it Lieutenant Commander or Lieutenant Colonel? Lieutenant Commander. Lieutenant Commander, okay. Uh, dear Grant, or I should say uh, Baron. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. It's good to see you again. It's been too long, and I'm mostly to blame for that. At first... When you're when you're in the navy on the far side of the world, there's always need. There's always one more adventure, one more mission that always popped up. If it isn't scouring the Australian coast, claiming one patch of island before the Frank uh, before the Franks do, or and then these past five years tied up in Sea Boy rebellions. Sea Boy rebellions. Yeah. It's uh, Indian pronunciation. Essentially, the old I East Indian trading company used mercenary companies called Sea Boys in the subcontinent. Rather in vital too, but once the, well, imperial grip got a little bit tighter, a number of these mercenary companies turned against us and turned rogue. Interesting. I have to consider my investments over there. Oh, join your grace. It is a pleasure to see you. Now, because there's so many of us, when you talk, it's probably a good idea to just ping your character. Mm. Ah, joy. How are things in the Americas? Oh, I can't ping him. Ping her. You can't? Oh. Hold on. Let me try this. What did does that do something? Just for hold you? down hold down your left click. There you go. That did it. Okay. Sorry. Oh, everything is splendid as always. I'm always excited to see um young love. <laughs> oh, certainly. I have to admit, uh the colonies I've been told have grown by leaps and bounds since their independence. Oh, most certainly. Um, I think that everything that was going so well um, until they've decided to start coming over here lately. Oh, goodness. Yeah. A uh, new money. Nah, no offense, Joy. But it does take time to learn proper manners and etiquette. I I understand your opinions. Ah, uh, but enough of that now. Please tell me that you're doing well uh, back here in Lon in good old London. Oh yes, I'm happy to be back. Um, nothing beats home. And Cassandra makes a grand entrance, waltzing through into the scene as she has been. Uh, organizing all of the the various help at the party and making her introduction. So she she wanders in with dramatic flair. My uh, my siblings, my my friends, it is so good to see all of us collected here again today. It it almost takes us back to the years growing up together and how long has it been since we've all been in the same room? I hope you all are enjoying yourselves. So wonderful to see us all here safe and sound after all of your adventures. Unfortunately, I, I'm not the one having adventures these days, Your Grace. I'm sure your battles in the House of Lords keep you plenty busy, Grant. Every day with boring paperwork. I stand Sandra, this party is simply lovely. I always appreciate an invite to get me 
um, out of the house. You know I've been busy with the children. I am so delighted to have you here, and I hope the children are all enjoying themselves as well. It's so wonderful to have finally gotten the chance to meet them. How is young Jade? Oh, Jade is is her is her mother's daughter, as they say. Radiant Rose, you mean? Oh, Grant, stop. I know that she is out um, forging her own way, and I am more than happy to see that. You don't look happy to me. Now, now, Grant. Do, do be, do be kind. It's been, I, I know it, it brings so many memories of when we were children and giving us each other such trouble, but we, we do want to be uh, tactful in, in our public Losing presence Losing a spell, today. losing your loved one can leave a deep wound. As Joy knows dear well as well. I apologize. I forget myself being the only non-widow slash widower at the table today. Life can be cruel that way. But Cassandra has thrown one hell of a party better than any military ball that I've uh, orchestrated. Perhaps this is a day for new beginnings. Agreed. Why, thank you. What a what a wonderful compliment. As, as I have seen some of those military balls, and they are always spectacular. Oh, goodness. Speaking of that, how do you feel about your potential new daughter-in-law? Duty compels me that I get to know her. After all, what better opportunity than I have than here to... One can never really make up for lost time, but at least live up to obligations at this point. I'm going to spend a monologue token on William Hawthorne. So the scene freezes camera pans in on your face and the question that I'm asking with my monologue token is how do you really feel about Rose Pickering and this because it's a monologue no one else can hear it this is just your inner thoughts and now context real quick just um so we know Rose I introduced Sandra introduced Rose and uh Theo correct and Correct. Because Rose mentioned she had some sort of tragedy or came from a humble background mm -hmm. and was intentionally connected uh, by me in order to help her out. Correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, so oh, it, basically her brother's a baron. Her brother's a baron. So, like, it wasn't that we were really doing that well until he got that. So that's why Cassandra... Isn't doing it necessarily just to be nice, but because Connection. My, the... my brother is the Baron, uh, so she can kind of like fold yeah, it in both the... ways. Do you get what I'm saying? Title for money. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure I was fully understanding before the, the monologue. Continue. Thank you for the, the brief interlude. Oh. Uh party, the dancing, the dreaming, new beginnings for an untrained youth of a son of mine that whose eyes pierce my soul every time I look at him. In truth, I know not the flower that my dear sister has lined him up with. A Scot, a foreigner, I mean, if she loves him true, then that is all I can hope for. 
As for the sun, perhaps there's just too much lost time there. Oh, rose, rose. Hair and matches the name. Who are you? Are you akin to my own? Is destiny perhaps about to repeat itself? Or will this just be a new play and new beginnings? One in which I simply look on from the sidelines. No, no, duty compels that I perform the function as the patriarch, at least of this immediate family, even if it's on paper only. And with that, the camera pulls away back into the back into this conversation. Grant turns towards uh, Cassandra. And what about you, Cassandra? Or should I say your grace? How do you feel about Rose Pickering? Why, I would not have introduced her to dear young Theo if, if I didn't think they were an absolutely perfect match. Her good family name will bring strength to ours, and she seems like a lovely young thing. Uh, William's eyes narrow a little bit, but... Did they have the fortune of knowing each other before the betrothal? So, there must have been enough time for them to have spoken to each other before a betrothal is made. Um, they're not as necessarily forced, um, but there is some level of coercion or can be some level of coercion. So it's probably not as long as like a regular dating in real life or in, or in our current modern era, but um, the engagements last a long, long, long time. Gotcha. But I'm sorry, just spinning character photos are <laughs> tracking me up. <laughs> this is this has become a horror thing right now. <laughs> yeah. You just like deselect, and it, she just doesn't deselect. I'm, I'm so, like stuck in the corner of this book now. <laughs> so if you want to deselect, all you have to do is just highlight uh, an area that's not her. I tried that. <laughs> my, my dear uh, Cassandra, how has my other daughter been? My fair, let's see here, my fair Caroline. Pause for a moment here. Remind, okay. It's a dog lover. Older sibling to Theo. Got it, got it. Thank you. Why, she has been so responsible and an absolute asset to this family and how she has taken care of dear Theo and trained him to be the the strong young man that he is. Um, she She has some work she's developed over the years. She seems to be especially fond of her of her dog. But um, you know, who who is not fond of their their companions along the way? Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, with Theo's future secured, is there any idea thoughts of prospects? I have tried to introduce her to some people along the way, but um, she she just did not seem particularly taken by any of the suitors that I've mentioned. So, in in the past, she has always so strongly focused on raising Theo and prioritizing his care that I hope in the future, once his future is secured, she might be able to exert a bit more of time and energy on her own. Excellent, thank you. Um, taking a, a little bit of a step back, looking at uh, Grant, I don't suppose you've 
kept in touch with uh, all of our old uh, fam uh, family members back in the day. Have you seen uh, Beatrice around by chance? I think she's over there. He points to the corner of the room. Engaging in conversation with some of the younger men. I see. Excellent. She doesn't seem to be a flower as always. Uh, always was growing up. But if, and if I remember correct as an aside, Theo uh, left Rose on the dance floor, correct? Uh, yes, but it was at the end of the song. It's not normal to have the same partner between multiple songs. It would it would be okay for Theo and um, Rose to dance multiple songs together because they are engaged, or a married couple theoretically could. But normally, it's not. It isn't regular to. Um, like it's, he's not leaving her on the dance floor in the sense of like abandoning her. I mean, you could see it that way. Yeah. But well, yes. So I think is, is Rose still dancing? Yes. She's social, social butterfly. She's just dancing with, dancing with whoever wants to dance with her. Well, my dear, dancing, well, my dear kin. And kind of takes like the rest of his glass and kind of uh, downs half of it. It's like, I suppose I have uh, expectations to meet and then goes off into the dance floor to uh, queue up to dance with Rose. So Rose will meet him on the dance floor and break away from her partner at the time. Um, I still see Caroline on there. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I oh. do not. Just you. Just me. Oh, there we go. So right. Rose leaves her dance with, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, Dennis as he backs away and allows the William Hawthorne to, to approach. Ah, Rose. Easy to spot like a, like a rose among tulips. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Hawthorne, it's my pleasure. And then I curtsy. Taking a slight bow. Ah, would you do me the honor of a dance, my lady? Most certainly. So we start dancing. Um, I am very... I'm happy that uh, that this betrothal could be made by Duchess Cassandra. Uh, I'm told that dear, my dear Theo is much better for your acquaintance, my dear. And uh, as I am he, yes. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, I myself am newly back to London. How are you taking the change of scenery from dreary Scotland? Well, I'm sure, as you can appreciate being a military man, um, having to flee Scotland because of the Americans has been quite difficult on my family. But to know that there are valiant men in the British military like yourself to keep us safe has always given me a sense of security here in London. Uh, wincing a little bit at that, it's like, oh, I was barely a lieutenant at the time in the Navy, but I swear that was a most irregular fight. The French, the Spanish, we knew how to fight perfectly well, but the Yanks basically just hoisted privateers and went off flipping past our nets. Well, they have yet to learn to fight honorably, which is why, um, which is why they could not handle remaining in the British Empire. Ah, uh, yes. But 
you you mentioned that your home was burned. I knew that you were from Scotland. I did not know that you had such an ordeal. Yes, unfortunately, it was not under positive circumstances for us to leave. But luckily, we um, Jasper has fallen into good fortune with becoming a baron. And um, I have fallen into good fortune with meeting your son. Most excellent. J Jasper, I don't think Cassandra mentioned him in her correspondence. I trust that he's... Uh, he and his wife are keeping you well? Well, unfortunately, Jasper does not have a wife. Um, he spends most of his days with suitors, but has yet to make anything official. Oh. Oh. Well, perhaps uh, if you would, well, perhaps an opportunity for another day. But this isn't, uh, but I still have to meet you. I've been away for a number of years now. Uh, unfortunately, it is good to be back in London from the far side of the world, but I have to admit, I, myself and Theo have not had the... had the right opportunities that I should have taken to get to know each other better. Well, tomorrow is another day, and I know that that would mean a lot to Theo if maybe we could all spend more time together. <laughs> I think there's too much damage now for that to happen. Looks kind of looks off in the distance a little bit. Well, today is about new beginnings, and I don't see any reason why there can't be more than one. Uh, if if you insist. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. If it's possible, I'll if you can wrangle my son, and I can perhaps uh, we we three can have a good conversation to catch up on days long past. I can certainly accomplish that and I appreciate your listening ear and um, your uh, attendance to our concerns. Uh, by the way, your son, uh, your brother, does he share the same crimson hair as you? Um, his redness is in his cheeks, not his hair. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, he, sh he shouldn't be too hard to spot. I would love to make his acquaintance, especially as a newborn baron. I'm sure that he's has a lot to live up to with a new title. He would always appreciate help um, and anything that you could do for him to find him a suitable match. I'm sure he would also appreciate. Excellent. Well, I'm Afraid that these days, just like this song, come to an end. Until we meet again, Rose. It's been a pleasure. Until then, Lieutenant Colonel. Commander. What is Jade Nightingale been up to? <laughs> that is a good question. I've been so focused on all of the other side characters that I'm planning. Um... Perhaps, uh, perhaps she is discussing with, uh, does not want to load in Beatrice, Beatrix's picture. Hold on a second. <laughs> Why is this? Ah, that's why. Give me one second. Off with Beatrix, who I believe 
we last left was hanging around some of the younger men. Or was last... We, we, we talked about her hanging around with some of the younger men. I believe Beatrix is played by Cassie. Uh, okay, but at this moment, it's just me and Beatrix now, yeah, correct? Yes, the, the others have left. Beatrix oh. is... I do really... have some things populated in her description. Yes, I saw that. Let's try to remember the... Can we remind guy. what we have described about her at the moment? Um, she was the ward of... Okay, yeah. Uh, she's an orphan. She's smart, elegant. Yes. She's in her mid to later 30s, as you would be able to tell. Uh, but kind of grew up with essentially William Grant, uh, Cassandra, and uh, under our father slash uh, Theodore's uh, grandparents. Do we have any feelings about how all of the siblings she was raised with would relate to her or how I would? Is that what we're it seems figuring out now? Essentially be your aunt, but not biologically. Um, so I think it would be okay for you to call her Aunt Beatrice if she was close to you. If not, uh, we never gave her a last name. Um, so... What All right. She's your connection, would... Kramer. What is her last name? You just call her Aunt Beatrice for now. Sounds good. That's what I was trying to determine if uh, the the awkward family, not family, which side of the fence we were falling on. Okay. Why, hello, Aunt Beatrice. It is such a pleasure to see you again. It's it's been so very long. How how have you been? Oh, I have just been reading a lot. Um, I've been. Thinking a lot about this changing world and um, really where we are in it. Um, I am happy to see that you have made it your way back to London. Yes, it's been such a culture shock since coming back, but in the same way, it feels like almost like I never left in some ways. So it's been so surreal and strange, but everyone has been so welcoming again and it's 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 good to be back um and seeing so many familiar faces i haven't seen in so long like uh young theo he's he's grown into such a fine young man uh but i i heard that wasn't always the case is that correct oh certainly you know how men are i mean if they're really just taller boys at some point um, I know that, uh, you might be looking for a suitor yourself. Ah, yes. People, people have been telling me that I should pay more attention to this for years, but, uh, I'm afraid there just wasn't quite the same selection of fine young suitors out in, in America where we were. Um, now that we're back here though, I'm, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe my aunt Cassie seems to have had such a lovely, and that's not aunt. It's a wait. Sorry, connection. Cassandra yeah, okay. is your aunt. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for a moment. I just questioned myself because I have Cassie written in multiple places, but that's <laughs> playing Rose. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, but yes, yes, I, I am hoping that now that we are coming to settle back with family here, that perhaps Aunt Kathy would be so dear as to assist me in the ways that she has helped some others in our family with her kindness and her wonderful social connections. We will, we will see. She's mentioned that she, she may know some suitable uh, suitors to introduce me to later on. Well, as you know, um, sometimes a book can be better than a man. 
Um, Cassandra has yet to connect me with anyone, so I wouldn't hold my breath. This is true. This is true. And, you know, many a good book has kept me company on nights where there certainly were no men to be found. I, I strongly agree with your sentiments in many ways. So we, we shall see what time brings. Well, Jade, I think you will be a fine, uh, fine lady either way with the man or without, whatever your heart so desires, I knew, know you can make come true. Why, well, thank you so much for the kind statements. And I mean, there there must be some quality men out there if uh, if a, a young troublemaker such as Theo can, can grow into a fine young suitor. Others must have, must have found the same path, right? One must hope. Well, or sometimes it takes the woman to make him a good man. You know, this is this this is true. I I met Rose earlier, and she seems like such a lovely young woman. I I am not surprised that someone of her polite demeanor could could have such a profound effect on Theo. Yes, well, there are only a few things that can convince men to behave, and I will let you guess what some of them are, but... Um, Beatrice, until... we don't need to speak of such things in such formal society. Well, but I will tell I'm, no one. I am sure that you are a smart enough woman, um, and until we see each other again, hopefully we will both have much better luck. We shall certainly see, and until then, I would love to hear any book recommendations you may have for me later on. Oh, certainly. All right, with that, I believe the two of you, I assume this conversation has, has come to its natural close. It does seem so. <laughs> Unless you want to be <laughs> It's the calling card. It's just the calling card at this point. Think, now, uh, now you have to spin any character you take over. That's just <laughs> that's the rules. That's how the audience will know that it, that it's you. And I guess he's controlling <laughs> it. Which means, right, Nick, move your character up and down, and uh, Kramer right and left. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we could have a scene with uh with Theo and Jade. That sounds wonderful. So Theo is actually, despite being the, um, essentially the reason for the party, standing over by the red windows, and when I say red windows, I mean the actual uh, curtains are red, the window themselves are not red, staring out into the garden. His, uh, his arms are crossed, and he is clearly in thought about something. Jade walks up to interrupt his uh, pensive staring. My dear Theo, I it has been so long, I'm not sure if you recognize me, but uh, it is so good to see you again. And my, what a young man you've grown into. I, I, I feel like the last time I saw you, you were... Being told not to eat bugs out in the garden. Cousin, <laughs> I, I would not have recognized you. You are much more splendid than the woman with dirt on her knees taking care of me that I remember. I am so glad to hear that, uh... You have such fond remembrance of our times together. It certainly was a, a different world entirely. And and my, look at you now. I see, I've met dear young Rose earlier today and she seemed just lovely. What, how do you feel about all of these, uh, about this arrangement? Have, have you gotten the chance to get to know Rose properly yet? I am still getting to know Rose, and I 
I'm still learning, of course. This is just an engagement. It's not... Not everything has completely moving forward yet, and... They say love is war, so... I guess... I will have to learn to fight for what I want. And what is it that you want? Love? Have you found, and speaking of that, have you found anyone? Any, any, any dashing suitors walking through the door? I, I imagine there's hundreds and thousands all over London, perhaps. Oh, my dear, yes. Um, in... When we were living over in America, there was this, there was not the same level of, of culture that you see here in in London. And upon my return, it has been I've been focusing on reconnecting with our with our dear family here, and I certainly didn't want to overshadow your your engagement and. We we shall see what what time means, brings us far. I'm sorry. What was that? By all means, overshadow. <laughs> oh, Theo, always always the jokester. You you certainly yes, know how to uh, how to keep a situation light. That's something that I have always enjoyed about you. But as you grow older, you know you must take on a bit more of a a serious tone when in polite society. Be be careful lest you jest too much. I will try to jest the right amount then. Perfectly splendid, Theo. No more, no less. <laughs> I am happy to hear it. Well, and Theo, aside from <laughs> go ahead. Aside from the the engagement, the reason we are all here together, how have you been in recent years? How it's been so long, I feel like I hardly know you anymore. Ah, well, father's been away for quite a while, so good spirits. <laughs> um, but all in all, um. Life is good. There's the engagement, and well, between you and me, Auntie Cassandra has. I've been living with her, and she's she's named me her heir. So life is fantastic. Oh wow! I am so surprised to hear that, Theo. But. I am happy to hear that you have been so well and that amidst all of life's troubles and tribulations, you have found your own path through here with, with the help of dear Aunt Cassie. And what about you? How has your life been? Well, there has certainly been some upheaval recently, unfortunately, with the with the loss of my dear father. But um, in, a, in a life such as ours, pain Train has been the the normal state of things, so one must learn to adjust. And wherever we go, wherever we have traveled, I've always brought my my books and and my my dear cat. Goes, um, you have a cat? <laughs> I don't yes, know what um, you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Theo, I I'm so. Surprised that uh, dear Aunt Cassie didn't tell you. That is why we have returned. Um, we we traveled far away when uh, when my dear mother was engaged and then married my father out in America. But um, rewind here for or or pause for but a but a brief second. You came back because of your cat. <laughs> no, silly. You you jest. Um, we just the right amount, of course. <laughs> Of course. Um, and no, um, the the circumstances of our return are, are much more somber, but uh, it's the one where where one might not be able to bring one's dog on a ship. Uh, one's cat certainly helps keep the rat population in control. So so they it was allowed. But um, 
Yes, our my dear father, um, your uncle passed away uh, a bit ago um, due to an unfortunate uh, illness that was incurable, and we we were deeply saddened. But at the same time, when now that we've arrived back in London, it has been such a pleasure to see so many familiar faces and to feel like we're coming home again, even as we have just left ours. That is a shame. But as I said, love is war, and we need as many allies as we can get. So it is good to have you back. Why, thank you, my dear Theo. It is a pleasure to be here. I feel as though we would be remiss if we did not have a scene with William and Theo before before this this whole thing is over but are there any other scenes that people want to run before this narrative part is over can you hear me all right i can hear you yes huh? doesn't have to be immediate but i would love a scene between myself and jasper which could be let's say either uh right after the, uh you said, hold on a second, you, you broke up there a little bit. You said it doesn't have to be immediate? Yeah. So um, I think at some point, uh, so William A. has a dance with Rose, um, and it's probably going to be kind of like doing like a little bit of a circuit trying to find either um, Beatrice, Jasper, or run into this time. Uh I guess we can start with uh with Jasper. Um oh, I'd also like to do one with Dennis because that's my other connection that I didn't have a scene with yet. Okay. So let's start this one with Jasper. Then we'll do one with Dennis and then the father and the son shall discuss. Sound like a plan? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, and a nice dramatic, dramatic go. Yes, ending. they shall a nice dramatic ending for this narrative cycle. So, I I also have one more scene I'd like to insert if we have time. Oh yes. So, uh, Baron Pickering is surrounded by all the beautiful single women at this party, and yet he seems miserable when you approach William. How old is Baron Pickering again? Ish. I, I forgot if he's older or younger than like, me. Especially when we're talking like engagement ranges from starting at 16, apparently. I mean, guys, say get... oh, go ahead. I'd say he's like 19. Okay. That sound fair? That's Next. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Dean, it's well, we kind of what? Let's so I think, in there. yeah, he uh, pushes William, his way out through the sea of women. <laughs> as you push your way out, you see, uh, the, the uh, the lieutenant commander with a pug, older pug, under one of uh, that he's holding with one of his arms. That. Ah. Is a beautiful dog. It's definitely an older one, but oh my goodness, he he had uh, I knew, I knew this dog before I left. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of surprised that it's still alive. And then kind of seeing that they're still a gay, it's like here. Let me tell you about uh, my military exploit uh, with some of the gentlemen over yonder, and then just kind of. Gently trying to guide the Baron away from the gaggle behind him. You are easily able to get him away as the stories seem to bore many of the women around. As you lead him to, let's say, a hallway? Yeah, not, like, not to like an actual den, but actually a hallway that's very visible would be perfect. Ah, I hear that you're new and tall. I had the good fortune of 
meeting your sister. Ah, yes, Rose is, well, quite literally her namesake. She is a Rose. She is, she really consumes everything around her with her beauty. But, I have now had the marvelous chance to meet with the, with you, Lieutenant Commander. I don't suppose, I, well, with your title now, and your uh, relocation down to good old London, I have to say, kind of looking back at some of the women that have dispersed, what do you with your sister now uh, happily betrothed. He pauses. Well, this may sound weird, but he looks at your dog. I wish to be a dog. <laughs> uh, to get a chance to Get away from it all? Exactly. And you know what? People love dogs. People love them because they are beautiful, adorable creatures. People love them because they work hard or have loving and caring personalities. And people don't care if a dog happens to be a baron or a duke or has many, many pounds in, of income. They just care that it's a dog. In dear relationship. When I went to the far side of the world and when you're surrounded in the military lifestyle, you get to know and rely on people around you. Yes, there's the rank and the structure behind it, but it is different than being here sometimes in the middle of a social maelstrom. And it's quite the social maelstrom it is. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see, like, if he's observant, you'll see, like, uh, William kind of pinch the dog's feet a little bit, causing it to bark just a little bit. But Why? Are you doing that to that poor animal? Hmm. Oh, this little guy? He's got more energy and more life in here than you know. So you uh, pinch his feet? A little bit. It, it's, uh, call it a bit of a, a, a way. Ah! Now I would like to use a token. Yes. To attract this dog owner. Ah. Would ah. you like to get a chance to hold her, perhaps? Don't worry, I can assure you that while she is full of life, she's quite docile. I, I would indeed. And that is your character, so you can, you're not necessarily compelling because you directly control um, that minor, you directly control Caroline, so you don't actually need to spend a token to get her to come. Um, okay. However, someone else will need to play Caroline for the scene. Sierra, do you want me to do it, or you won't do it? Go for it. Sure, I'll be Caroline. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, yeah, so. since you, uh, if you're playing Beatrice, right? Um, person who runs Beatrix is okay. is what? Is me. Oh, is you. Okay. So, so you want Sierra to be uh, Caroline? I yeah, I can so, play Caroline just if so you So that did. you're not going back to back. Okay. Uh, for a thing. So Jasper takes the, the little, it was a pug you said? Yeah. And 18 year old hand, pug. Making and sure is... not to pinch its feet. And this is Caroline's pug, correct? Yeah, Caroline's pug. Ah, oh, my dear Caroline, 
are they running into you here? <laughs> Why there he is. I was looking everywhere for, for my little for my little boy. Oh, I'm right. surprised he wandered off and made a few friends. Is this you your know? dog, ma'am? Why of course. I there were not many who were allowed the honor of bringing their uh they're small companions to this party. <laughs> this this one is mine. It is a lovely it is a lovely creature. Would you would you like it back? <laughs> yes, please. He he looks uh he looks like he would like to come see his mother. Oh yes. Jasper. Caroline uh is very fond of dogs. I think you had at least two when I left. And I believe that you've picked up a few more since, uh, in my absence. Why, yes, I, I have quite a few now. Um, one, one must fill one's home with all of the love and small, uh, you must have some paws in the house. <laughs> After all, men, men may leave, but, uh, one, one small furry companions will, will never break your heart so. And how many dogs do you have? At this point, um, let's see, there are four of them at the moment. Uh, this, this is the, the youngest and smallest, this is why he seemed the, the perfect one to, to bring along to this party today. Is an After all, mother. you have to look at this cute face. Like, you, he is such a, a, a lovely little icebreaker. Everyone wants to meet him. You use him to break ice? Oh, why? Oh, ever, ever the jester. I um, when um, Theodore made that actual, a, a very similar joke like that earlier. Baron Jasper seems to actually be slightly stumped. <laughs> okay. Um, why no, silly? It is it is a common uh, phrase meaning to uh, to initiate conversation to help others feel feel comfortable in in meeting new people, and this this party is such a, a lovely chance to bring together some uh, some who may not have gotten the chance to know each other yet and I have found uh, a small furry face often help often help people be a more comfortable version of themselves around others as they maybe step into a situation they have not encountered before uh, yes I I can see I see where you're coming from. I do, I do like dogs myself, though I own none. I recall your sister mentioning that you lost some, uh, at least of her dog, when you had to flee your home not too long ago. Yes. Yes. Oh Skippy. my, I'm so sorry to hear that. What, what happened to the pup? The blasted yanks. It was. Okay. It was a cannon. I I wish not to disturb you with the gory details. I am so sorry for your loss. Um, but if you ever decide that that your home needs four paws in the house again, um, please come see me. I I have a few connections you might find very useful. I will indeed, Miss Hawthorne. He bows. Uh, it was a... I'm it... sure that uh, we'll all be meeting each other again as we go through my son, the show. I'm sure that will be the case. And I look forward to it. He says, nodding. Why, yes, I wholeheartedly agree. It is such a pleasure to make your acquaintance. 
Likewise, I think I must now go and speak with my sister. Very well. Take care. With that, he bows and heads off. He would. He seems like a very kind, kind-hearted fellow. That he does. Although, uh, perhaps not uh, quite all there. We, we, we shall see what London High Society has to offer and perhaps help guide the help guide him along. He is a foreigner and a Scots and young to be thrust into such a title as that. This is true, but perhaps it is easier to help train someone in when they know nothing of high society than to try to train out bad habits when they've learned from the wrong sources, wouldn't you say? I would say that perhaps you would have no better teacher than your son. Oh, why, thank you. That is too kind. I, I certainly have, have tried my best with dear Theo and have learned many lessons along the way. I... While you're doing that, I hope you have a moment or two to there to reconnect old thought like me. It is a pleasure to see you putting in the effort and coming back around to, to rejoin our lovely little family here. And please let me know if there is any way I can help you uh, readjust through the, the changes that you are facing here. Not this battlefield. I'll definitely need it. Thank you very much. Of course. And with that, uh, I'd say... Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Yes, got her. I, I wander off. Who was next in conversation? I think Did anyone else have any outstanding conversations left other than myself? I think I had uh, ideally one with Beatrice and one with my stuff. Uh, Cass, yeah, did you have I, anything? I was yes, like, I... oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you can finish. Oh, Sierra, go ahead. I was just going to say I would like Jade to have a scene with uh, Grant at some point. Jade and there. Grant, who I think was being played by me earlier. Yeah. Second, let me fix his token. I mean, if you want him to spin, I can play him. What was that? <laughs> what? Go. Well, who is naturally playing him? I'm trying to recall. Ryan is, but he's oh, not yeah, here. No, but he's not here. Yeah, spin. Spin? All right, go ahead, Cassie. You got to make oh. him spin. Oh, well, of course, now I'm under pressure. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. I'm just trying to zoom out. <laughs> Whatever. Um, who am I with? You can't zoom out and see who I'm with now. <laughs> oh, are you that zoomed in? Oh, no. That's what I tried to say. Also, is there a pan on the page? Hi, spinning. Like, right mouse button will allow you to pan. Aha, thank you. That is what I've been missing this whole time. Oh, me too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm like stuck, like oh, wow. looking at a very zoomed out map. I'm like, oh. Yeah, same. I just kept zooming out as much as I needed to see things, and ending up with a like three quarters of gray screen. The pan helps. Good, good. Find the scene. Tell me who I'm in the scene with. Well, me, okay. it's me. You're, Which yeah, you're with, Jade. you're with Jade. Jade. Yes. Oh, okay. It's me. Okay. I Jade. The problem is her. What? <laughs> what now? <laughs> Okay. All right. Young Jade so, is always happy to. I'm always happy to be at these parties um, of celebration. Dearest Uncle, it is such a pleasure to see you again. It is. It has been far too long. I hope you've been well while we've been away. Yes, I've been making sure to get all of the business done and um, making sure everything is completed. But um, trying to 
enjoy these moments while they while they last. Uh, of course, it, it shouldn't surprise me in the slightest that you have still kept such a strong focus on business as uh, as children and family never was never quite your uh, your passion. I, I'm happy to see that the business has gone so well in recent years and we have all of our larger family here today and it's it's wonderful to see everyone again and my dear look at dear theo look at how he's grown i i scarcely can believe it i it's been it's such a strange thing to look and see as he's now getting engaged and growing into a young man when i last remember him accidentally throwing a ball through the, the ballroom window it's oh, that upset me so i i certainly hope he has learned how to uh be a better uh, better steward of the things he's given to care for i certainly hope so as well he needs to understand that we have taken a lot of time and effort to get our family to this and we cannot be subjected to such fr frivolity. Well, it seems that uh, Aunt Kathy has helped to uh, raise him well into uh, a man learning, learning to take on a bit more responsibility. We, I can only hope that young Rose uh, will, will be helpful in, in his growth as well. Some men are strong on their own, and some require a woman to whip them into shape. That must be very true. I just, I, I do have some concerns. And Kathy, uh, I know that Aunt Sandra introduced uh, Rose with the, the best of intentions, and she has a strong connection with her her brother, the Baron, but um, their their family finances do not speak to her perhaps knowing how to handle such prosperity so soon. I, I can only hope that she and Theo are able to uh, have the guidance they need to, to maintain such prosperity and good fortune as they have been given. Well, certainly they are not from here in London. Um, however, I, as a Baron myself, know that there's a lot to handle. And I'm sure that if her and Jasper are able to manage that, she can certainly manage a marriage. I certainly hope so. And it, it is so lovely to see, to see Theo, his prospects of happiness. I I have such fond memories of, of my young cousin from when we were small and he does deserve to be to be happy with someone with someone who cares about him so I I hope the best for the two of them. I am sure that they will find that they will find their way um Cassandra always has a way of figuring these things out. While she might be my sister, I can say that she does know her way around a social circle. Ah, uh, that is that is very true as evidenced here tonight. She has brought such a collection of London's highest society here for for us to all enjoy this lovely evening. Most and certainly. I must, I must ask, as uh, you talk about how, how the business has been prospering lately, I'm so so pleased to hear that, that this has been going so well for you. Have you, have you found happiness in it? Have you found, have you found what you have been looking for? As he sighs. I mean, you find, you find happiness in what you spend your time on, and I spend my time on my business, so I ought to find happiness, shan't I? I certainly hope so. Although now that uh, now that our family is all reunited, I I should hope that we can all find some happiness in in our familiar familial connections as well. 
Well, now that everyone has come back to London, I'm certain that that can happen. And I'm certain that um, the siblings have spent time together today and this will not be the last. I am so pleased to hear it, Uncle. It is, it is so, such a relief to, to... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Such a relief to um to see everyone back back home safely after all of their all of our travels across all of these, these distant lands. Uh, I shall be intrigued to see how how we all find our way to fit back together now that we've reunited again. Well, we should plan something soon. I I would find that absolutely lovely as as I have so many fond recollections of our time when we were much younger and young Theo and I would uh, would listen to all of your stories by the fire and I, I look forward to hearing more of them in the future. Until we see each other again. Yes, of course. Take care, Uncle. I, I must away and reconnect with more of our, our lovely family here today. Take care. Take care. All right, with that, they bid each other adieu. Um, I think that we are going to do one. It sounded like Cassie wanted to do one more scene, right? And then we're probably going to have to call it because I think it is later than we'd normally play. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Did not realize it was anywhere close. So my... Uh, yeah. My computer has the wrong time zone for some reason, so I'm like two hours behind. I'm like, oh, it's oh. eight o'clock. It's not that late. That is commitment. Setting your time to English. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna roast so she will not spin. So okay. I should spin my characters instead of ping them because apparently that's easier for me. Apparently. Okay. All right. So, um, who did you want? Who did, who, would, who did you want to... Uh... I didn't have a scene with Dennis yet. Dennis. Like... Dennis is controlled by Kramer. Remind me Dennis's connection. Let's see. Um... We met at a previous party. And he's my Scottish, Scottish friend. Got it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Dennis, thank you for coming to... Um, our party. Well, you always shine at a party, even if it's down south. <laughs> I know the feeling. I'm so happy that I could have someone from the uh, motherland here today. Oh, goodness. Oh, this was back in the Highlands, and we were at the real party. That's when we could get loose and have a little bit of fun. Ah, all these, all these English and that knitter knockers all tight and twisted. I swear, I haven't heard a real laugh since I got here. Well, I do appreciate that you brought your um your very Scottish outfit to London. Well, of course. <laughs> 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 I'm ashamed of my time. So Tartan, or is, is that what it's called? Uh, the 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 actual like colors, um, of you are are illegal. Like there are uh, Scotland, and there there was uh, um, Culloden. Uh, there was essentially the yeah. rebellion of the Bonnie Prince not that long ago. Um, it talks about in his little thing. It says that he's like dressed only in the latest style and suitably contemptuous of ambitious careers and hard work. So he's like basically like with all these people that are here and he expresses it. I, I don't know. That was my thought. Maybe maybe I pick up on it, but it's not explicit. How about that? Like I pick up on it because I know. Okay, this okay, okay. So he's being very he's, subtle about it. So he's dressed in the latest Scottish fashion. Yes. yes. Scottish fashion, fashion, not traditional necessarily. Oh, okay. 
It's like an inside thing. Only I. I love that about. Nick immediately was like, "That's illegal." <laughs> you are out of order. <laughs> I mean, not a criticism, but it's very amusing to me right now. Continue. <laughs> And so I I compliment him on it on his on his clothing and um it being in the latest Scottish fashion. Well, there has to be some fashion here, not just a bunch of overly dressed uh, dolls, as it were. I swear, I think they're all wearing makeup, especially the men. Oh, I know, but. To be a part of English society, you have to marry into English society, I hear. At that, to you, with a little cuff on, and be like, yeah. Well, we do what we have to to survive, right? We're a long way from home. Well, when are your plans to become betrothed? <laughs> oh goodness how soon I can I return and find a proper woman in the highland well I know there are lots of Scottish women around here that would be more than happy to make your acquaintance oh I think apart from uh, the fair rose in front of me I have yet to see one that matches the true beauty of our uh, good highland she stares at him knowingly. <laughs> I, oh, perhaps, uh, perhaps this is the chance for new beginnings here after all. Tell me, tell me honestly, how, how do you feel about your, well, English uh, print? Oh, wait, like... wait, 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 wait. Monologue. <laughs> So do, oh, you I'm you, do you want her to answer the question first and then have her do the monologue? Or do you want to have her monologue and then answer the question? In good Hamilton fashion, I want her to monologue and then give it disingenuous. <laughs> we don't know it's disingenuous yet. <laughs> but, all right, so the room time freezes. The camera pans to Rose Picker. Uh, Pickering's face. He asks me how I feel about my betrothed, full well knowing that I am doing this out of obligation. Um, if only I could be with someone who understood me better and um, could appreciate me for who I am instead of trying to force me into this polite society. Um, he knows full well my intentions, but is afraid to approach me with his his own desires, um, leaving me in the throes of trying to determine what I should do versus what I want to do. So she answers to him, as I said, in order to be a part of, of English uh, commonplace, you need to marry an Englishman. I the choice between a comfortable life in a cave or the uncertainty of flying free. I don't uh, envy your position, madam. Well, unfortunately, as a woman, I am not afforded the same freedoms as you, Dennis. But I hope that one day I may be able to shake to shake free of these shackles and and do what I think is right for myself. I, no, no man north or south of Hadrian's Wall will ever tell a Scottish woman what to do. I think well, you are. Scene. Scene. And we're going to call it here for tonight, and we will, we haven't entirely finished this narrative, or this novel chapter, um, just because I think there's a few more scenes that people wanted to do. I think it should probably end with Theo and, and William speaking, and Ryan will probably be here, so he'll probably want to get a few scenes in as well. So we yeah. will end it here for now. Thank you very much. 